Hey guys, how are you doing? Welcome back to Sassy Talks. In case you are new here, my name is Cecilia Kasiku Namakasa and you are welcome. Thank you very much for joining us. For those of you that have been seeking a band, I always, always appreciate you. Now today I'm going to be doing something different from the usual. So today we are doing a book review. And in my hands I have with me this very interesting book that I have read. It's one of the books that I've read and it's titled Troubled Waters by Dr. Joseph Disho all the way from the mighty Kavango region. So I really enjoyed reading this book and I've decided maybe I should do a book review for those of you that haven't read it yet so that you can quickly run and go get yourself one and read it and believe me you are going to learn a lot and you are going to enjoy it. So first of all before I go through and give you a review of this book I just want you to look at the cover. One of the reasons why I love this book is this cover very interesting very catchy when i look at this cover i actually see the whole you know um depiction of my culture which is the kavango culture there are two women pounding mahangu one of them is carrying a baby behind and then one woman is coming from the river where uh, she's carrying a bucket of of water and then there is you know a kettle somewhere there and then you can see there's a river and somebody is in the canoe and then the house you know the homestead the Kavango homestead and all that so apart from the fact that it's a post-colonial book it also depicts the culture of Kavango or the Namibian culture Troubled Waters is actually a book that was said in 1974 and it, it tells a story of a young man called Andres Malan. So Andres Malan is a young man that grew up in the apartheid South Africa whose parents are actually, um, I would say, Africanos, you know, they were part of the colonizers. So his parents really hated blacks, especially the dead. And so um, this Andres Malan was sent to teach at a school in Kavango region so instead of being in the military he actually thought that when he was coming there he was going to be fighting against Swapo for his country so instead he was sent to go teach religious and moral education in one of the schools in Kavango region at that school the white teachers were not allowed to mingle with the black teachers there was only one black teacher who was female and he, her name is Lucia Namvura. So these black teachers were basically not allowed to sit in the staff room with the white people. Andres um, so was told to, to teach the Bible in a way that benefited them, the South Africans, the colonizers, you know. He had to twist the words in the way that benefited them, in a way that, you know, these um, black students were meek. He had to teach the Bible in such a way, twist every word to fit or to benefit the colonizers and then Andres actually finds himself falling in love with Lucia who was the um, female teacher the only female teacher at that school she was actually described as very beautiful and she was described as very independent and stuff. so Andres finds himself falling in love with this black woman he was so scared he didn't want um, the other white people to find out it because if they found out then he was going to be in trouble they were not allowed to have sexual relations with the blacks they were not allowed to sit in the same place with the blacks they were not allowed to eat with the blacks and so on so he found himself falling in love with this lady and he was so afraid of what his people were going to do to him if they had to find out they fell in love they had sexual relations and stuff so um after falling in love the way they, they both feared because even lucia herself knew that if her people were to find out they wouldn't have allowed it it was like a taboo you know a white person and stuff from south africa they are colonizers they are superior and and all that so they had to leave you know with that fear of what could happen to them if their people had to find out what had happened had to find out that you know um they are having sexual relations so in the end the book really ended on a sad note 
in extent that Lucia finds out that she was pregnant, but she couldn't tell Andres that she was pregnant because she also feared for him. She also feared for him. So Andres had to leave the country. He had to leave Namibia and go. His mission was complete. He had to leave Namibia and go to South Africa. And Lucia finds out she is pregnant, but she couldn't tell him that she was pregnant. So it was really, really, really sad, guys. When I read that, I was like, wow. So this lady is pregnant and the man is sleeping and the man doesn't know that she was pregnant in my mind i was like why can't she just tell him why can't she just tell him when the book ended i was like please dr disho can you at least you know extend or maybe can this story please just continue can it please just continue where you know andres would come back to namibia to kavango and meet lucia and then finds out that lucia was pregnant with his child and all that you know i wanted that happy ending so it really really ended on a sad note you know when lucia was pregnant and andres had to leave and she couldn't actually tell him that she was pregnant because they feared what would happen to the child number one if they had to find out that she was carrying a white baby or a mixed race baby obviously she was going to be in trouble and then andres was also going to be in trouble so to protect all of them she decided to keep quiet about it now another thing that i also um enjoyed in in in, in the book is the fact that you know um looking at lucia she was educated she was a woman who was educated so every time she could go to the village to her parents to visit her parents you know her parents thought she was too educated to basically cook she was too educated to basically um um you know to 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 fetch water to go to the river and fetch water or collect firewood and so on so they treated her so special and they thought you know her hands are not for cooking and all that and this is these are things that are happening in our society basically if you look at the way people look at women that are educated they feel like you know educated women women can't cook they feel like educated women can't do certain things you know at villages and so on but we do go to villages and we cook on firewood and stuff like that so it's all these you know stereotypes that are going on in society so it's also depicted in this book and the one reason why I loved reading this book and I'd recommend this book to a lot of people, I want to keep this book. I bought it for myself, so I'm going to keep it for my daughter because you'd learn a lot about the Kavango culture. So Disho, like I said, he depicts, as the, the cover of the book says it all, he depicts the Kavango culture so well. He talks about the home pass, he talks about, you know, the traditional authority and all that. And then he also speaks about, you know, he, 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 he he uses most of the words there there are certain um rukwangali and sambu words in the book and then you know the whole culture the issue of going to the river fetching water collecting firewood people pounding you know people it depicts the kavango culture and the reason why i want to keep it for my daughter is because one day if we found ourselves in the society where we are not surrounded by people from our region we are not surrounded by people from our culture if my daughter reads this she will at least have an idea of where she comes from so that is why i wanna keep it even the songs i saw there was one song in the book um which is a kwangali song it actually reminded me of home it reminded me of where i come from it reminded me of who i am it reminded me of everything i could see and hear growing up so i was like wow this book is for kids so i'm gonna keep it for my children one day they will have to read it and know my culture so this is all i wanted to tell you i wanted to give you a short review i hope i've done a great job this is my first time doing a book review actually on youtube i'm good with writing but not speaking about it if i had to write believe me i could write a lot of things but i hope that i've given you enough information and i hope that you will go and get yourself this wonderful book like i said this book depicts one of the namibian cultures which is the kavango culture troubled watches by joseph dishel thank you very much for watching guys Always remember to subscribe. Mwah, be genius.